Welcome to one of our favorite places in the country. Riverbend Hot Springs, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. My parents bought the property in 1988. This oh, wow. was a bait shop. Wow, this is beautiful. This is so cool. I had no idea out here in the middle of the desert there's actually a spaceport. More objects have been launched to space from New Mexico than any other state in the entire country. Very skinny. <laughs> I'm ready for space. In our last episode, we took you on a whirlwind tour through New Mexico's capital city, the cultural mecca of Santa Fe. And today, our road trip through the land of enchantment continues south to a town full of fun. From hot springs to rocket ships, welcome to Truth or Consequences. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three and a half years, traveling through North America and beyond. Each week, we bring you along with us to show you how to live like a local in every new state we visit. Welcome to one of our favorite places in the country. Riverbend Hot Springs in Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. The name is crazy. <laughs> we'll have an explanation There's later. There's a good story, of course. <laughs> we visited here in 2019. But we didn't have a vlog yet, so all we have are pictures and great memories. We knew we needed to come back and share it with all of you. So guess what? You're along for the ride. So one of the cool things about Riverbend Hot Springs is it is a resort with rooms and casitas, but it's also an RV resort. Each one of the sites is a full hookup site that includes unlimited visits during your entire stay, including the morning of your departure, I think up until 10 o'clock. So after you get all checked in, you'll get a cool wristband. And this is also an RFID, which you can scan right here. And we'll get you into the pools. Believe it or not, people weren't the original occupants of the pools here at Riverbend Hot Springs. This is the only commercial property on the river. This oh, wow. was a bait shop, so it was Smith's Minnows. Originally, it was called Pierce's Minnows. My parents bought the property in 1988. We were actually on a, uh, a vacation slash home hunting expedition. My mom is from New Mexico. Uh, they knew they wanted something where they could have plenty of land to raise their young kids. I was eight years old at the time. They were literally driving down the street as the woman who owned it, Mrs. Smith, was hanging up the for sale sign. And he said, uh, can I look at this? You know, it was perfect timing. They bought it right there on the spot. They, they told her to take down that sign and they bought it. That fast. That fast. And we ran it as a bait shop for a couple of years. My brother and my dad and I would go to the Gila Mountains and we'd trap our own minnows and we'd, for, we'd camp for weeks and bring them back and sell them. And uh, one day my brother killed all the minnows, which he's uh, embarrassed of, but I told him he's the reason we have this now. It kind of got my dad going, you know what, the, the main reason we moved here was the hot springs. He always wanted to do something with the hot springs. And by that time, 1990, he had made friends with a local healer, Dave Cloverleaf. And Dave believed in my dad and he sold us commercial water rights. And we were able to transfer them here, drill a well, and we started pumping the hot water right into the minnow tanks. Which are still here today. Which are still here today, and they're called the hot minnow baths. We now have 16 pools on the property. The water is geothermal. They've carbon dated it to be thousands of years old for its journey. So it's entered the earth at some point. It's down in an aquifer. It hits cracks in the earth, hits very hot magma, mm -hmm. comes back up as steam, and as it comes back up, it's picking up minerals and recollecting as mineralized, hot, heated water. And basically, we have this big aquifer underneath Truth of Consequences, a big hot bubble, and we're all just tapping into it and pumping it out. But back then in 1990, we didn't know what to do. We were like, what are we going to do with these hot springs? So my parents had a friend that recommended making it to a youth hostel. And youth hostels are basically budget lodging with back, you know, for backpackers. They have dormitories, there's camping, because it was a real funky property. We had teepees you could stay in. We had a love boat, which was a, a pontoon boat floating on the river that you could <laughs> so sleep cool. on. People loved that. And over the years, you know, more people wanted private lodging. It got to the point where my parents were just a little bit burned out. And uh, to keep them from selling the place, I told them to take the sign down. And I moved back in 2006, 16 years ago, and I took over the youth hostel. Wow. And have just slowly and organically, you know, remodeled it and given people what they want. This was my childhood home. <laughs> and then later on, my wife and I lived in it for about three years, about three years ago. They want private rooms, and now I'm seeing that they want uh, hot springs in the room, mm -hmm. you know, or outside the room, but dedicated. And so we just listen to the guests and what the majority want, we try to do. They are here for this beautiful view. This location on the river is why we are the most popular. And so this area, it's now known as Truth or Consequences, but it used to be Hot Springs, New Mexico, it right? Was. Yes, it was. <laughs> and why the change of the name? Because that is a funny story. So there was a radio show, a very popular radio show in the 40s. Okay, so it's time to play Truth or Consequences. And they were just transitioning to be a TV show in 1950. And to celebrate their 10-year anniversary, they said, any town that wants to rename your town for one day to Truth or Consequences, we will film there. We will put on the show. 
So Hot Springs, New Mexico, hemmed and hawed, and they decided that's us. Rather than doing it one day, they decided to make it permanent. It was unanimously voted by the city council that the name of Hot Springs, New Mexico, be changed through truth or consequences, New Mexico. And that change happened April Fool's Day, 1950. So did people think it was a joke because it was April Fool's Day? They absolutely <laughs> did. And then, you know, this town is just full of great, exciting people that wanted to try something new. They celebrated every year. There's a fiesta. And for years and years and years, the host, Ralph Edwards, would come to the fiesta and he'd bring famous people. And uh, we, we got a lot of notoriety for a while out of it. Talk about early um, tourism publicity stunt kind of thing. I mean, that was That's what it jackpot. Was. That's what it was. It's a beautiful day out, so we're gonna hop on our electric e-bikes and go get some pizza that's about like a mile away. It's finally warm enough to go for a little ride again. All right, what's your favorite thing about the e-bikes? I think they're really easy to ride. I think it's really nice because you can pick kind of your level of engagement or involvement because if you don't want to pedal at all, you don't have to pedal at all. So they go pretty fast. I like them a lot. Outer <laughs> edge. Okay, guys. Truth or consequences, Brewing Company. The beer is amazing. Well, and also, it's just so cool that you know they have a local brewery that is producing a thousand kegs a year. That's a good sized brew pub. Yeah, and it's such a variety. Like, they, if you're into IPAs, if you're into cider, if you're into stouts, like they have all different kinds. I mean, John, the chief beer officer, officer which like, <laughs> what a title. I mean, he's been brewing beer for a long time. He started as a hobby because like he wanted to drink his own beer. And their story is so much fun. We got to chat with Marion and John, the owners, and they're doing great things here. Initially, there was skepticism that we would even open because it took a year to open um, but then we did and gradually people have discovered that it's sort of a living room of the community it's where like the, the cowboys and the space engineers from the spaceport can intermingle and have a beer we have about 16 beers on tap right now and I think they're all excellent we have a couple of uh, mixed drinks we make one called a Blake Shelton which is a combination of beer and cider we do a michelada we call a Red Maven, which has a green chili and spicy stuff in it. It's a local fave. I love hearing the stories also of how people found truth or consequences. <laughs> you know, like their story of, well, we saw a picture in a book which led to a road trip, which led to an overnight at the Holiday Inn locally here at the Truth or Consequences. <laughs> that leads to them going, wow, this is a really amazing place. We should move here. <laughs> and then start a business. And start a business. I mean, it's just so cool. So not only do we have great beer, but also the cafe across the street came over with menus and is delivering food right now. And the burgers were so good. They were phenomenal. I had the hatch green chili cheeseburger. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was amazing. Just 25 miles outside of downtown Truth or Consequences, you'll find Spaceport America, a purpose-built facility perfectly situated to advance many aspects of space research. Rockets, missiles, and space technology have been a major part of the New Mexico story dating back to the 1940s. More objects have been launched to space from New Mexico than any other state in the entire country. Spaceport America was strategically built adjacent to White Sands Missile Range. So they did a lot of research starting back in the 1990s. Back in the 1980s, the federal government decided to open up aerospace to private companies. Before that, it was only ever open to Department of Defense and federal organizations like NASA. So New Mexico really jumped in right at that point and said, let's look into this. We've got national labs here. We've got White Sands Missile Range here. We've got the expertise with NASA here. NASA have been here since the 1960s with multiple facilities. Let's look into a feasibility of whether or not this could be established in this state. We are uh, the fifth largest state in terms of land mass, but one of the smallest states when it comes to population, which makes us a perfect location for suborbital launching. So this is our mission control area. I know it's not quite as um, overwhelming as what NASA's are, but uh, uh, this is where we actually control all the air traffic that comes here. And I'm sure when you guys arrived, you noticed there's a plane that's been whizzing around out here. That's one of the Virgin pilots. You can see they've just brought it down here. They do their training on a daily basis out here to make sure that they're used to the G-forces. So we have 
five permanent tenants at Spaceport America. Haps Mobile has a project on the north side of the campus where they've got a 262 foot wingspan unmanned aerial vehicle system that is going to be creating cell towers in the sky. Uh, so they've got a two year project where they're going to be doing research and development on that vehicle before it's FAA licensed to fly over populated areas. Virgin Galactic is our main anchor tenant here in the horizontal launch area, but down at our vertical launch area, you can just about make out in the distance over there. We have Up Aerospace who've been here since 2006 and have launched the highest launch today at 77 and a quarter miles from Spaceport America. They work very closely with NASA's Flight Opportunities Program and take up a lot of research suborbital before it then goes up onto the ISS. Next to them is Air Environment's other unmanned aerial vehicles that are working down at the horizontal launch, uh, vertical launch area. And then the south side we have Spin Launch. Which is a very cool concept. It is a I very cool I love the idea concept. of like, it's like a, uh, what, a centrifuge almost. Absolutely. Like a centrifuge, and then when it gets up to speed, it releases whatever it's launching, and then it shoots straight up. Unbelievable. It's a brand new launch system, which you just couldn't do anywhere else. I mean, at the moment, if you're taking anything to orbit, there has to be a two-stage way of doing it. And if you look at the vehicles, most of it is fuel. So what they're trying to do is come up with a kinetic launch system. Imagine you've got an item on a rope and you're spinning it really fast. You know that when you release it, it will go far faster. So these guys have created a whole uh, centrifugal system which takes the air resistance out of it in a vacuum. They have a tether that will go up to about Mach 5 eventually and then they'll release that. I think we're calling it a rocket and it will take payloads up suborbitally. This is the runway. It is 12,000 feet by 200 feet. It's been used by all sorts of great vehicles out here. The building you see in front of you is the Gateway to Space building that's owned by the state of New Mexico and leased by Virgin Galactic. It is both a terminal and hangar facility. So the front windows that you're looking at is three levels of area that have a rest area, a Gaia lounge as they call it. Their middle area is mission control, and then the top level is where they do their astronaut training. The idea that you have like a mothership and then the other one detaches from it. Yes. Uh, in order, that's so cool. It's a completely unique system. It goes up to about 50,000 feet and then releases the spaceship. It drops for a few seconds, then it powers the rocket engine and then goes up in a much higher curvature and then it goes up to about 55 miles. And it's quite an incredible sight to see in a very exciting time. It made New Mexico only the third state to send humans to space which is a huge deal for such a small populated area. You can see this is where the engine is on the back. These fins actually move in various configurations when they're coming in and out of, of space. It flips, right? Like, because it allows them to... Yeah, it to... actually goes upside down so that they can see Earth more than they can see into space, because let's be honest, you're looking out into black, <laughs> whereas it's the glow of Earth that really is what resonates. It's amazing just to stand next to... I know it's a replica, but to think about, like, this is what takes people to space. Absolutely, absolutely. A very quiet, very remote, very earth felt area because you can see this beautiful landscape, the mountains, and really not much else. And the idea is that it's going to give those astronauts an opportunity to sort of say goodbye to their earthly surroundings and enter in towards what's next. So the design is exactly that, to funnel you in to this experience of the astronaut walkway. So as you can see, it gets very dark. <laughs> it's almost a bit Star Trek in the way that it kind of appears like this. So those doors at the end open and reveal that wonderful walking space. But for those of us that come on the tour, we get a side door entrance. <laughs> oh, secret door. <laughs> Come on through. This is our tour area. This is where we have our G-Force machine. It gets up to about two Gs if you ever want to take a ride. Kaylin, would you do it? Yeah, do it. Kaylin is strapping up right now. Uh, she's going to be getting onto this. Um, I'm going to affectionately call this the Vomit Comet because they have conveniently located this little centrifuge thing right next to the bathrooms. So if you get sick, you can just pop right in there. Put your feet in here and push them to the back and then we're going to tighten you up here. Perfect. It's okay, I promise I'll be gentle. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, right. That's <laughs> I 
better to like open my eyes or close them. I can't tell. Woo! And back. There you go. That wasn't too bad. No, not too bad at all. I do feel like a, a little bounced around yes. a bit. Yeah, it's a little bounced around right now, but no, I think it's it's pretty it's a pretty cool sensation. I'm ready for space. That's Sweet, you're ready to be an astronaut. <laughs> Very cool. That was definitely not as bad as I was expecting. On our next episode, our New Mexico adventures continue in the land of sand and sun as we head south to White Sands and Las Cruces. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.